At that time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Medina, he sent his proposal for Umm Habiba. Now, Umm Habiba is older. She's not young at this time. And she's already been married. Right? She's not somebody who's even in the same geographical location as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he's not marrying her because she's so beautiful, or because she's young, or because he can fulfill yani, the, the relationship that a husband and wife have, or she can serve him, because she's in Habasha, and he's in Medina. But he sends that proposal to her. The ulema, like Ibn Kathir and others, they mention some fawaid from this. Ibn Hajar has mentioned some of them as well. I'm going to summarize from them. One of them, it's a testament to her iman. That she was somebody of such iman, Huh? That Allah ordained for her to be from the people of Jannah, from the Ummahat and Mu'mineen, from the mothers of the believers. It's a testament, secondly, to her patience. And yani when her husband died, Ubaidullah ibn Jahsh, imagine the test she must have gone through to break, to be like, you know what? I came all the way here, I did hijrah for Allah, and now my husband's dead, and I got nobody to earn for me, and I got nobody to support me. Khalas, I'm going back to the Quraysh, I'm leaving the religion. Or, khalas, I'm becoming Christian. Or, khalas, yani, uh, uh, why me? You know, like how people get frustrated, right? But look at her patience. She left everything, she made the hijrah, she was there, her husband died, she's still patient on Islam. Then Allah rewards her in this dunya and akhirah. In this dunya, with the honor of being the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does it mean to be from the Ummah al-Mu'mineen, to be from the wife of the, of the Prophet sallam, the mother of the believer? No doubt you're from the people of Jannah. And when you are somebody who stays upon that, then you are from the people of Jannah. So she's given this great glad tidings for the Akhirah as well. It is also a testament to how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had a soft heart. And he didn't think about what's the benefit of me marrying this woman. She lives far, she, you know, all this stuff, right? She's not young, she's not, it's not about, you know. No, he said, what, what will happen to her iman? I will send a proposal to her, she becomes a Muslim. Later on, she comes to Medina, but at that time, she was still in Habasha. Tayyip, who conducts her nikah? Who is the one that uh, yani, uh, does the marriage? It, and, and who will be the wali for her? Because her father at this time is not Muslim. Abu Sufyan at this time is not Muslim. So who will, will it be? The one who will step in for her is the Najash. Now how can a kafir give a Muslim in nikah? He cannot. Otherwise Abu Sufyan would be her wali. But because Abu Sufyan was kafir, his daughter now here, Um Habiba, her wali is the Muslim ruler of the land, Najash. And this gives us first a dalil that Najashi was Muslim at that time. Secondly, it's a fiqh ruling that if there is a woman and she's a reaver, she's somebody who accepts Islam, or yani, her family becomes murtad, whatever, in a case where she doesn't have a Muslim who can be a wali for her. Yani, a Muslim, whether it's her father or her older brother or her uncle, somebody from her family that can be a wali for her. If she doesn't have that, then the Muslim ruler of the land can be a wali for her. Tell you, it might be difficult. I don't know. I haven't tried. In some of the Muslim lands that you go to the king or you go to the president, and you're like, I need a wali for the sister that became Muslim. They might be a little busy, right? So you can bring somebody, as the kutub of fiqh mentions, like qada, like a qadi, like a scholar or an imam, or, a, or somebody who is a leader in the community, a Muslim, a pious, outwardly, Allah knows the heart, to be a wali for somebody who is a revert. And this is a dalil from, from the life of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, one thing uh, I want to mention, there is a well-known narration, and it's later on in the seerah, but I'm going to mention it because it's related, which is that Abu Sufyan came to Medina, Afterwards, after she had already come to Medina, when the Treaty of Hudaybiyah was at a fragile moment, he came to restore it. And he went to the house of his daughter, Um Habiba, Ramla, bint Abi Sufyan, and he sat down on the firash, on the bedding, 
or the and yeah, bedding is not like our time where it's like a big cushion mattress and things. Bedding is like a piece of cloth. On that floor mat of the Prophet ﷺ, and he was about to sit and she moved it. And we hear this all the time in Qutub and, and he, I've mentioned it many a times in the past, right? And here, when she moved it, he asked her, is it because yeah, I mean, you th- you're going to bring me a better one? Like, I'm your father, so it's, it's not good enough for me? Or are you taking the bedding to over me? I mean, so he told, she told him, it's because this is the bedding of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and you are a mushrik. And people mention this a lot. But again, it's not about entertaining people. This narration is weak. This is a weak narration. So, just as a heads up, um, yeah, I mean, this narration cannot be relied upon. Tayyib, regarding her nikah, what we find, and this is again in the Sunan of Abi Dawud, where hadith number 2107, that Najashi, he even paid the mihr on behalf of the Prophet ﷺ. And he, out of his love for the Prophet ﷺ, he paid, and he paid 4,000. The hadith in Sunan of Abi Dawud just mentioned 4,000. So I, I, I looked up some of the books of Sirah, they mentioned dirham. But I wanted to find it in hadith, so I found it in the Musa of Imam Ahmad that this was 4,000 dirham. Dirham is a silver coin. And the ulema of tarikh, they write, like Ibn Hajar, that this was the most expensive mehr of any of the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu And it was actually not paid by the Prophet sallallahu it was paid on the behalf of the Prophet sallallahu by Najashi. 4,000 dirham is a large amount of money at that time. There are a lot of fiqh rulings we can derive from this. One of them being that even if somebody marries more than one wife, it's not necessary that all of their uh, mahar will be the same. It's not unjust, you know, or unjust. Because there are different situations, different time periods, right? And yani, somebody can pay the mahar on behalf of somebody else. Right? Now, Najashi here, obviously he showed this respect and honor to the Muslims of Habiba that were there in his land and he acted upon her behalf as a wali and gave the mahar on the behalf of the Prophet alayhi salatu a statement to his iman and the Prophet alayhi salatu salam he يعني, uh, waited until she was able to come back to Medina with one of the Sahaba and when she came, alhamdulillah, she lived with the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. 